classes about gender identity for three-year-olds. 0207 862 is the number. We want your calls on this because compulsory relationships and sex education classes are going to be taught to kids as young as three across Wales in the autumn. Now, parents have now launched a legal bid asking for them to be scrapped, claiming that they are inappropriate and even dangerous, some are saying. Well, as part of the new curriculum, sexuality and gender identity issues will be woven into all classes, regardless of the subject. And let's take a look at actually the, the types, of, types of things that could be included in it. So here we go. Take a look at this. So it's been divided up into different ages and you have from seven to 12 year olds, but from three to seven year olds, uh, the kind of things they're going to learn about is developing empathy, kindness and compassion through positive uh, interaction. So that's, that's good, right? No problems with that. Uh, however, go a, little bit in, go a little bit into the syllabus. They're also going to be taught an awareness that there are different types of families and different types of relationships. And it's this, uh, that some parents could take issue to. Let me move my glass out of the way. <laughs> and then also, finally, uh, everyone is unique. Yay. So is there much of a problem? Well, three-year-olds will also be taught about using the correct terms for body parts and the rights to privacy. The government say the lessons will be age-appropriate. So uh, what do you think the court should do, Myling? Do you think the court should get involved? Is this something you might find problematic? For your children? Uh, I have a 15-year-old, an 11-year-old, and I have a 3-year-old. So my 3-year-old would be targeted for these lessons. Yeah. Uh, this often becomes a minefield because let's be very clear about what it is we're teaching. You said age-appropriate, tick. You're saying teaching the right terms for body parts, huge tick. So, you know, I think as soon as you hear the word sex education, immediately people think it's going to be inappropriate. It's going to be far too much information. This information is key. It's body anatomy. I don't know why people are so frightened of penis and vulva. We give these ridiculous com comedic names. Woo woo, nunny, winky. And then you wonder why we have a whole generation of, of um, adults who find it uh, intimidating. They don't have boundaries. Uh, they don't have respect for each other's bodies, their own bodies. They, they don't know how to navigate this minefield. I think there's nothing but, but positivity, body positivity, that comes from this information. Teaching about the difference between touch, safe touch, um, something that's an inappropriate touch. Um, you know, in, in I think it's up to 97% of sexual abuse cases regarding children, they don't get prosecuted because a child doesn't have the terminology mm -hmm. to explain what happened. Now, it's no different to the anatomy of an arm. Did they touch your arm? Well, did they touch your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder? There's so many other compartments, uh, the, the components that come into this. I would, I teach this to my children at home. So I think the fact that it's being normalised at school as well, it's vitally important. Teach your child to have privacy about themselves, but empower them as to their own body so there's no embarrassment issues. And most importantly, there are boundaries. Well, uh, and do you think Mylene has a point, particularly the areas of bound boundaries, understanding other children's body parts better, which could help when they hit teenage years? No. Uh, I think the crucial thing is Mylene says she teaches her children, and I think that's absolutely right. I think this is down to parents. Uh, parents will have different views. Some parents might want to teach, for example, that marriage is special and desirable uh, and to be then confronted with, oh, but, you know, my teacher says um, it is something else. But also, also just look at the legality of this. A judge has already said there should be a judicial review. Now, not just the parents, the judge has said there should be a review. The Welsh Government refuses to wait for that review. And not only is it introducing all these subjects, but it's making it mandatory. Now, hitherto, parents have had the right to withdraw their children. And I do feel very strongly that Mylene, who's a parent, uh, and people in my family uh, who are parents, should have the absolute right to say, this is something that we want to teach our children. We want to control the pace of revelation. We want to teach it as we believe it is appropriate. And most parents will tell you, um, particularly parents who've got several children, that some children are ready to know things at six that others are not ready to know until they're eight. It must be down to the parents. But often uh, parents feel embarrassed because they themselves have never had these issues addressed. So you expect a teacher to incorporate a lot of these lessons and these learnings, like let's say biology, anatomy, this is your nose, these are your ears, and then suddenly we go back to this is winky. 
it just becomes comedic. You're a major in Latin. These are Latin terms, Anne. There is no embarrassment about them. And what a teacher and what a, a, a parent does normally is you actually back each other's work up. So in this case, it's taking it for granted that so many people are going to be teaching this at home when they're not. The pace is being set by the curriculum at schools. There's nothing that's a red flag there. There's nothing as a parent that I sit there thinking that is not age appropriate. A relationship doesn't have to also be about marriage. It could be someone has two dads or one mum or one dad or blended families. It's just looking at different configurations. Precisely, precisely my point. The parents might want to be teaching the importance of marriage. There are still parents who want to teach that and may feel undermined by, by this. But can I just make another more general point? We've had a discussion that police are expected to do far too much, you know, to take on responsibilities that should properly belong to others. We're now doing exactly the same thing with the teaching profession, you know, and they're expected to teach absolutely every last thing, when in fact parents should be taking the principal responsibility. Well, let's speak to one of the parents, uh, actually, who is uh, part of the campaign against these classes. Kim Isherwood actually joins us now. So, Kim, what, are, what, what do you take issue to with these lessons? Why do you want them scrapped? First of all, I think it's really important to state that we are a mixed group of common sense people safeguarding our children. We've, take, we've got lots of concerns here. The most important concern is the fact that we have no control over anything our children are being taught. Um, so that's the parents' rights. So there's serious safeguarding concerns surrounding here as well. Um, we've heard a lot about age appropriate, but it can't be defined. There's no assessment to our scientific statement to define that. So that is just a term thrown around. Also, we've heard Miley speak about terminology and correct terminology. Well, some parents out there are far more qualified than Miley to be discussing this, like myself for argument's sake. I am highly qualified in child sex abuse and institutional abuse. But that's another topic for another day. The issue here is it's very much open to interpretation. Um, and what we've got then, like say for England, for example, if we've got one teacher in each, in each school interpreting this, we've got 22,000 different forms of interpretation. Well, that then becomes questionable. When it's questionable, it becomes unethical. And when you're teaching, when you, when you're teaching something that's questionable, you can't teach in a critical way. So if you can't teach something in a critical way, then we're dealing with a definition of indoctrination. Okay. So, you know, we've got lots of give, issues here. This is, this is a huge, huge problem. Let me give Mylene a, a chance to respond, because as far as Kim's concerned, Mylene, that, you know, maybe she doesn't feel as qualified enough to be the kind of parent to teach this sort of thing or to know exactly whether she's taught in these classes. Yes, so. I mean, in, to what you're going to call qualified, I know this is my nose, but mm -hmm. that is my nose, it's a fact. As is a vulva, a vulva, as is a penis, a penis. It is just a fact. It is not a word to be scared of. It is just basic biology. It's terminology. That's it. It's a fact. You're talking about safeguarding. So I think we all agree as parents that we want our children to be safe. And we want to make sure that it is age appropriate. I can't stress that enough. I would want this to be taught in an age appropriate way. Um, and actually a, a safe hug or being able to consent or not consent. Consent is key. That is what I most definitely want my children to understand, that, if, that, that their body is, is their own. Again, I don't know how that can be open to interpretation. That is pure fact. That is your body. No one else dictates what happens with your body other than you. The interpretation is what the problem is, that vague, the vagueness of uh, the vagueness of where people think that one term sort of encompasses all. Nini, what does that talk about? What does that say to a child? It says that they, they should be ashamed. It's comedic. Nobody wants to talk about it, address it. But actually, you can break those components down, do it as a really almost boring biology lesson. Here are some new terms and don't be embarrassed by it. I don't know that if every parent is qualified to teach maths or English or biology. But at the same time, we're just showing that interest and showing and encouraging the work that the teachers are doing. Who's qualified to do anything? These are just basic facts and I think the reason people are so intimidated, why it becomes such a huge minefield is we hear the word sex, mm -hmm. but not on that board, not in anything that the government has stipulated, not even what the judge has put a stop to, does it use the word sex that the children are going to be learning it. It's because parents have obviously taken issue with this. It's good to always question things, but it's now going to be investigated. But ultimately, empower your children from the very beginning and give mm -hmm. them give them the right to their own bodies, their ownership and their boundaries. So Kim, is that the case here? Are you just intimidated by some of the subject matters? Are you scared? As a criminologist who specialises in child sex abuse, so I'm definitely not scared of this 
topic. And what Miley is discussing there, um, to properly safeguard a child, you need to understand the perpetrator of abuse. And when perpetrators of abuse um, get their way by engaging confidently in these conversations with children, we enter in a very dangerous field then, you know. So there's different levels of safeguarding surrounding this. Sexual safeguarding is a very, very complex field, as is every other topic under this um, umbrella term of RSE. So going back to our answers, you know, we're expecting far too much of the teachers. This shouldn't be in the hands of the school. This should be in the hands of experts, where teachers are always students in this situation. No, you know, far more experts. Experts. Child, when, a child says no, when a child says no, there is no ambiguity. No is no, and they should understand. No that... is no. Yes, no is no. We're not teaching children no, though. We're teaching them consent, which is a no negotiation skill. Now, if you look at any perpetrated narratives, going back to all different policies that's gone through Parliament as well, through Pride, what you will find is they strongly believe children can consent and children can communicate with their genitalia. So what we're doing is we're actually... What do you mean communicate with your genitalia? Sorry, I'm sorry. What does that mean? Communicate with their genitalia. What does that mean? Communicate about their genitalia. But, but, but children can. They, they need to know potty skills. They need to know when they need the loo. And they need to know no is no. They need to know that they hide their private parts. They need to know what the names of their private parts are. Do you agree that there shouldn't be childish, comedic terms for private parts? Vulva and penis. Do you agree well, with that? Or is I it, is think, it winky I think, I think a parent, it's a parent's right to teach their child whichever word they want. When you're giving a child the same terminology for their genitalia, okay. you give him predators, passwords, a way of engaging. Mm. You're really not hot on this topic, my niece. You shouldn't okay. even be discussing it, to be honest with you. Uh, Kim Isherwood. So good talking to you. Thanks so much for joining us uh, on Jeremy Vine. Let's take some calls. Let's speak to Vicky, calling from Somerset. Vicky, how do you feel about uh, children as young as three <coughs> years old getting a sex education? Okay, so I completely agree with Mylene. Um, I've got personal experience. I was a nursery teacher. And within the, that nursery, um, years ago, we celebrated same-sex relationships. We celebrated married heterosexual relationships. Every kind of thing was included. Um, it was included as a norm, as part of our day-to-day -day teaching, including using normal terminology, biological terminology for body parts safety, you know, with your own body and with other people's bodies. That was a norm. And I think people need to look very carefully at what this instruction is telling teachers. It isn't telling them that a penis goes inside a, of a vagina. It's, it, it's telling them to be safe. My personal experience, the only complaint we ever had from a parent was when I myself got married and the children were told Miss so-and-so is going to change her name to Mrs. So-and-so. And a parent actually complained about this because she didn't agree with marriage. And you were covering your face uh, when Vicky was talking. Yeah, I mean, I'm just very glad that I uh, didn't have a child uh, going to that particular nursery. Wow. Parents, parents, wow. parents have to take the responsibility and the decisions. Now, what if they I, don't? Well, hang on. But what if they don't? I'll, I'll answer that question. You've got to give me half a chance. Okay? Go, go, right. go. Thank go. you very much. Parents have to take the responsibility. I believe in parent power because ultimately we expect the parents to be responsible for the sort of child that they turn out and for the sort of citizen that child becomes. Now, it's all very well saying what happens if the parents don't take responsibility, well, but what happens in a whole vast number of cases where parents don't take the responsibility? So that what they does should. happen so, then? So what does happen is um, that parents are not all obliged to pay the price of parents who won't take responsibility in health, in food, in all those things, we don't expect uh, everybody to be equally responsible. And as far as I'm concerned, where parents have strong feelings, as they do in this case, those feelings should be respected. Uh, Vicky, thanks so much for your call. Let's take another call uh, quickly. Christine calling from West Midlands. Uh, Christine, how would you feel about these, these type of lessons being taught to, to children as young as three? Oh, morning, Claudia. Morning, panel. Well, I, I actually agree with Anne. I really do. Uh, I think we're turning into like a nanny state. I mean, yeah. three years old is far too young to pile all these responsibilities onto their young minds. At three years old, they should be enjoying life. They, you know, if they see same-sex um, parents with a child, 
a three-year-old won't look and think, well, that's wrong. They just accept things. They just accept it. It's not so much they think um, it's know. wrong, but maybe maybe they might be confused or maybe need an explanation. I don't think so. No, I don't agree. Three years old, children are children. Yeah. They accept children most things. Children are inquisitive things. at three, asking all the questions all, all I the had time. three children myself. I actually know what I'm talking about. I know I do agree with Anne. My son started asking me questions at seven years old, and I was the one that explained things to him in a nice way, and he understood, and he grew up, he's now married, as he's got a lovely partner, and he respects women. Right, right. I was the one that told him, not the school, I agree with Anne. What about parents who, who might struggle? So, you know, I'm from a West African background, yeah. right? And I tell you what, the conversations we had about any of this did not exist. You know, yeah, what if parents do struggle? They are, they maybe are embarrassed or, they, or there's no connection with their children. And, yeah, they, they might want uh, the school to take over, teachers to take over. Well, no, let, let the parents be educated then. Let the teachers have a parent's evening night let the, let, the, let the parents talk, talk to the children about it. If they find it difficult, then let the parents talk to the teachers. Okay, all right. Christine, fair enough. Some people don't even have parents to talk to the teachers. So, you know, I, I accept that every child is different and every parent has their own strategy for each child because every child's different. But there aren't always parents to even attend some of those parents' evenings. Some, some children don't have a mum for whatever reasons, yeah. or they don't have a dad, or they have two it's dads. And if a child is asking those questions, and they didn't ask the, the question at home, they ask the question at school, or they're talking about, they're drawing their family unit, or you know, any number of situations that can arise, but it happens at school. Mm -hmm. What if the teacher's supposed to say, it's a very valid question, mm -hmm. and it just deserves a really simple answer. It's not digging into a minefield of actual sex education, it's just making it normal. Thanks again, Christine. Uh, let's speak to Meg calling from Surrey. Uh, Meg, how, how are you feeling about sexual education classes uh, to children as young as three? Meg? Meg, are you there? Can you hear us? No? Oh, maybe we can go to Paige. Do we have Paige? Hello? Oh, who is this? Is this Meg or is it Paige? This is Paige. Hey, good morning to you, Paige, coming from Cal, <laughs> of our Glamorgan. Uh, thanks so much uh, for calling in. Yeah, what, how do you feel about sexual ed education classes for three-year-olds? Um, I think it's very important to just state that this is not just for three-year-olds. This no. is going to be to affect all of primary school age children. I have four children myself, four boys, um, seven, six, four, and I've just had a new boy. Oh, um, and I think it's been in the bad <laughs> Congrats. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I just want to say that um, I don't think a lot of parents are just speaking, teaching children about the basics, you know, that they already are taught in school. I think it's more important to um, state that it's more about the gender ideologies that they want to, you know, um, teach our children. If you actually look onto the Welsh Government website, it states that they want to teach about LGBTQ, gender ideology, and, you know, so on and so forth. And I think a lot of parents, whether you are religious or not, do not agree with that, you know? And if, if we did want our children to, to learn that, we would teach it ourselves. Now, I don't have anything wrong with, if you're an adult, you know, when you decide to become one of the over 100 genders that you want to be. But I think, you know, teaching that at such a young age is inappropriate. Yeah, and that's, this is the point that, that Kim was making as well, Mylene. It's that there might actually be parents incredibly involved in, you know, the, what the plans they have in teaching their children, and they might have their own time frame uh, in when they would like sure. to, you know, introduce their children. No one's disputing And that. teachers are taking over, though, and maybe, yeah. you know, doing something that their parents might not want. Oh, my God. You know yet. what? People complain if teachers teach. People complain if teachers don't teach. It's just... No, no one seems to be able to win here. They, they are giving information to your children. That is what we want our children to have at age-appropriate times. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what is in the curriculum for every single stage. What I do know is what they have proffered seems perfectly reasonable. Just understanding boundaries, understanding the right terminology, and also understanding what is safe, a safe space for yourself and, and but that's okay and it's now it, this, this is why it becomes a mindful because people